Take two is right. It's the same thing. I, got, I, I need a big note that says, hey, you know what? Turn on that one button that doesn't automatically turn on, aside from everything else automatically turning on. But it's good to see you here, Frank, Alyssa Brown, Tim Mobest, new Adobe employee. Welcome, buddy. Um, uh, oh, your muted shirt, take two. Yes, I should have worn that. I have a shirt that says you're on mute and it's hilarious. Uh, but it's good to have you guys here. Froja, awesome, Noor. We're gonna dive into creating some fun abstract art. So just having fun in Illustrator, but creating some, some cool art that uh, you know doesn't have to necessarily be complex, but we can make it as complex as we want. Uh, and I will just go ahead and uh, switch over. I kind of, we'll get inspiration out there for one, as I switch to my desktop, right? Rick, what's up, Rick? Happy Friday to Jordan Crawford. I just did a search on, say, abstract vector. So uh, in Behance, you can kind of jump down and see, oh, this would be kind of cool. Is that vector that got a lot of texture in there? So we can kind of explore some fun themes and do something like this with lines. Of course, it'd be you know, pretty straightforward to do, but we're just being inspired right in here, getting into this sort of like fabric look, right? Could we create that sort of shading in Illustrator? So that that one is fun. So um, what I sometimes might do is like do screenshots. So I'll just like, bam, do a screenshot, right? Maybe even bring this into Illustrator, just like so. And again, just as inspiration. Uh, wherever it is on my desktop. Maybe I did not grab it, but let's try this one more time. Okay, here we are. Boom. Boom. Ah, there we go. All right, you guys get the idea. I'm just using a Mac. I love these colors, right? Sort of just a splash of color, making a sort of an abstract desktop background. Again, just kind of getting ideas out there. That's all I'm doing. Uh, rather than just starting with just a blank page uh, is the idea. Gradient studies, those are cool, right? I love, love this stuff, these lines, different examples of that. So anyways, let's have fun. We're going to sort of start with some basic shapes and get really crazy after a while. You know, crazy for designers. It's going to be crazy. We might even use color. It's going to be crazy. OK, there it is. All right. How's everybody doing this fine? Friday. It's Friday, people. All right. So there we go. Some different examples. Uh, yeah, you can see them right here. Uh, I might actually kind of have a little, uh, little bit of an 80s bent to mine, because today I'm also going to do some like, uh, I don't know, retro art, some synth art, if you will, um, for my Photoshop masterclass. And I thought it would be cool to kind of have these two tie together where we create these graphic design elements, these fun elements, and then we'll use them in Photoshop. So again, here's just a, obviously, a simple rectangle. You can give it a color. Like so. You get the idea. Let's take it a step up. Of course, gradients we could throw in there. Uh, oh, you fucking series talking to me. All right, so again, we're going to create some fun synth elements, which is going to be awesome. Hopefully you're excited, right? So again, that's, that's all I did is I did a search. I tried to get inspired. Love this stuff, right? It's all these little things that you cram in your brain and then they start to start like getting like knocked around and mashing into one another. And then you're like, hey, you know what would be cool if I did X, right? Uh, but also like if you're learning how to use Illustrator, take an example that you see out here and say, hey, can I make these flowers, for instance? So don't be afraid to do that. You can see right in here, again, this is very sort of 80s-ish. But again, all I did is a search for Illustrator abstract art. And this is also what I'm talking about. Look at this. It's like perfect. This sort of wall art that we see right up here, right? Not complex, but still pretty cool, like this. Perfect, right? Fun art that we see, not complex, uh, that we want to make. What does it take to make this? Uh, under Just 
uh, understanding Illustrator, understanding design principles, right? Like, why is this not in the center? Why does this look better when it's further down on the canvas here, right? Things like that uh, we just want to keep in mind, right? But again, just making this cool stuff that we see here, right? This color space series as well, right? So we'll do that again. Sorry, these are taking a little while to load. Let's just zoom in on them. You get the idea, okay? I uh, also have a Pinterest board too, right, where we can see some cool stuff. I really liked this and these images. Anyways, you get the idea. This stuff, super fun, right? Are we inspired? Hello, Muhammad. Muhammad, are you inspired? I hope so. Let's take this simple gradient, right? We get the idea. Yeah, we could do this all day long. Uh, I typically like to jump in to the uh, gradient panel and turn this into a freeform gradient. Right, so uh, this is gonna be, have some fun colors. Turning on freeform gradient, adding a pin right there, changing that to say that sort of hot pink, another color, yellow, yeah, why not? Down here, let's do a purple, right? Just like that. And again, just having fun with these colors. Because again, life is already, life can already be tough. It's nice to be able to jump in here and play and kind of be surprised by colors as well, right? So, oh, I even like that. Oh, I like the dusty pink, right? So a couple different ways we can go with this and uh, we can always change it later on too, okay? All right, so there we have our uh, lovely background. That's looking pretty good. Let's lock that down. Let's uh, just kind of hide our references. I don't usually don't need these that much. It's just like inspiration, right? Uh, but we could talk about doing something like this, creating these waves. Honestly, I would probably do this in, uh, I would probably do it in Photoshop with Liquify Tool, just to be honest with you. Is that okay that I say that? Love the colors. I get a thumbs up from Michelle. Thank you, Michelle. So examples. Here we have it, this is our background, and then our art will go on a separate layer, right? So we can always kind of turn that off. I wanna be inspired by it, by it, but not distracted by it as well. Uh, we could jump in here and uh, work with different shapes, and that's all I'm gonna start with, right? We could start with something like the rectangle, which is seemingly pretty innocent. Let's actually do that, let's draw out, actually let's do this, let's do a simple line. Let's do a line on the top, Okay, this line is going to be set to white. And uh, yeah, I typically have this many panels open. It's a lot. Awesome, thank you. Thanks, Tim, appreciate it, man. Uh, the colors might change based on the artwork in front of it, but I wanna have something graphic in front of it, and then behind it, that background is gonna have that brilliant color. But again, this is all subject to change because we're gonna play, right? So here we are, have this down here. Ba-ba, ba, -bah. ba -bah. Maybe black, maybe white, I don't know, right? So there we have those two. We'll dive into the blend tool, and again, this is a master class. Uh, let's make sure you guys can see that right down here. I have two lines basically selected. I will click right here with the blend tool. I'll scroll up to the top and then we'll click again, boom. And then we get all these lines that blend them together, all right? Vania, welcome Vania. Good to have you here, Andreas. Uh... Oh, spring break's in effect, huh? Nice. Okay, so right over here I can see, okay, well, geez. This blend tool, double click on it. There's too many lines in here, too many. We could take this to specified steps, take this down to like 80, right? And there we have sort of those dense lines. Almost too dense, 50, and then hit the tab key. And uh, yeah, that's what we can go with. We can always change the color as well to something like white, I don't know. I'm noticing that this is getting lost. Hey, let's fix it. Oh, sorry. Uh, I wanna edit that gradient. We need to make sure that's in the foreground. 
and edit gradient. So if you're wondering how to edit the gradient after you've already made it, since it's getting a little lost down here, uh, just go to your gradient panel and that's how you bring up those color stops. So hit edit gradient, there it is. That's the one that needs to be a little bit darker. I guess I was, uh, I thought I was uh, maybe uh, a little more right with this darker color initially. Uh, but we just need this white to stand out a little bit more. And like I said, we would play with this, all that good stuff. It's a little bit like an eye chart, but again, we're just having fun. All right, with this, oftentimes, you guys, I'll just drag that off to the side, holding down the uh, option and shift keys. Let's take this, let's expand this. Object expand, expand the fill and the stroke, right? And uh, now what I wanna do is I wanna start like distorting these lines. Yeah, this is still, this is still almost too much. Does it hurt your eyes? I hope, I hope this doesn't hurt your eyes. It's kind of, I don't know, it's hard to tell. Um, some, sometimes I'll do this also when I'm working and I don't really care much about the canvas. You can hide artboards, right? Now we get to work on this white space, right? So again, maybe remove all that. Let's just do this, bomb, like that, and make this black. There we go. Maybe that's easier to see. Is that easier for everyone? I don't know. Still like an eye chart. It's going to become even more like an eye chart. You don't even know. Anyways, I'm just going to grab this and I want to distort these lines, right? Kind of like the example you saw earlier. We'll go in here. We'll go to behind the width tool is the warp tool. So selecting the warp tool, right? I'm going to be able to distort these lines. If you hold down the option key or alt key, you can resize it. If you hold down the shift and option, this is how you change the brush size, right? So we can get it to the size that we want. And then we can come in and just kind of push that like so. Pull this down, you get the idea. Creating these lovely curves, as you can see, just something abstract, just for kicks. Okay, so we can have fun with that. Fabian, yes, thank you for joining us. Thank you for hanging out. So there we have some fun designs and you can play with this like all you want, of course, which is awesome. So we could take this, let's take this, let's move it over, right? And just keep in mind, you do have to uh, select this object and then go in and then expand it saying, hey, give me all those individual little lines. Now that we have these individual little lines, I typically ungroup it, not sure why. I don't even know if you have to. And then warp it. And these are all the options that you can do when it comes to distorting your um, graphics, right? So again, again, just making fun, abstract art. Whoa. Okay. Uh, to think graphic artists had to draw this line by line back in the day, Christine. Uh, good question, but you'd be surprised. The blend tool actually has been around since I think Illustrator, like 88, basically Illustrator one or two, it's been around for lot, a lot longer than you think and still is one of the most powerful tools. All right, so you can explore all these tools, by the way. If you're curious about the warp tool, and I've, I've shown this a thousand times too, if we wanted to. Anyways, let's complete my thought. Double click. See, in Illustrator, our tools have even more options in here. Just double click on it. And now you can see the size of the brush, but right down here you want to get into, uh, actually right here, you want to get into the intensity. Like how much can we pull um, those uh, vectors, right? So we can increase that if we want to have more. Um, angle doesn't really matter since it is circular, but again, just kind of pulling that down and making a different shape, maybe something more abstract. Maybe even just getting you uh, interested in, say, the pucker tool, right? And what happens there, right? That's actually kind of cool. Let's do that again. All right, we are having fun. Welcome. It is a fine, a finally Friday, as they say. Like, I don't know about you guys, but is there much difference between your weekdays and your weekends? I mean, I'm still working on stuff over the weekend, I feel. <laughs> Uh, 
So yeah, let me know how you guys are doing. All right, let's do this one more time, because I, actually what I want to do is I want to go ahead and, again, expand this. And I was just having fun with the uh, pucker and the bloat tool. So if we double click, we could see, yeah, pucker and bloat. So let's do this, let's pucker it, bam. Let's bloat it over here. Oh, that bloat doesn't look as cool. Because it's so intense, so I'll double click, I'll take this down to like 20 intensity for bloat. Ugh, still too much. Uh, you could change this based on pen pressure if you happen to have. Um, let's go to twirl, double click on twirl. Let's see, uh, twirl, we could see it distort. Yep, there we go, bam. Anyways, we're just having fun. Is that okay? You guys get the idea. Okay, keep in mind, you can have fun with this still. Even if you go back to this blend tool, uh, you, could, you could have fun with this. Since I'm working on this black and white, uh, one thing I could do is select this line. Let's open this up. Let's take this down to five. Right, we can make it start thick and then get thinner. You know, so we have this sort of look that might work for us. Start thick, get thinner. Make it more extreme, as you can see. And we can have more fun with this. Let's zoom out. Let's actually make this even larger. Uh, by the way, you could change your transparency. Um, I don't know if you could change the whole background color to black. What you can do, because this is, as I'm working on white, um, you can actually um, view transparency and then change your uh, show transparency grid. And then under document setup, you can change your uh, transparency. Does that make sense? How old is the internet? Uh, 70s, right? I, th I think the first sort of, I guess, email or whatever was sent, wasn't it made in the 70s? So anyways, uh, so if you guys want to know, boom, boom, right? I made that all black. Now, instead of having this big black square, I'll turn that off we'll go to view and show transparency grid. Boom, there we have it. So now we've made, in Illustrator, we've made the entire background black. Technically it's transparent, uh, but this might make it easier to work. Okay, so I don't need to worry about drawing a big black box like I did over here. Uh, but anyways, we're coming up with different ideas. Now I can come up here, I can hit N for pencil, flip this, pick a white. You know, let's have some fun, Paul. Gradient, uh, drawing a line that you obviously can't see because I'm working at such a large scale. Let's zoom in a little bit more. There's our line. We'll move up over here. We'll go, zoop. we'll move up over here. We'll go like that. Three lines, right? We did blend earlier. We'll do three different gradients, right? So for this second one, let's pick this color. For this third one, we will pick uh, this color, or this color, or this one. There we go. I don't know, something like that. Either way, I have three lines with three different gradients on them now. And using our blend tool, the results may vary because uh, I don't know how many points are in each one of these lines. So let's just see what happens. Specified steps. We'll go 50, just hit the tab key and you'll see it. 50 seems to work pretty well. And now we have this bendiness to these uh, lines, as you can tell. Cool. Um, who remembers the days when we had to go to cyber cafes? Cyber cafes were never really, a th I don't think they were really much of a, th at least not, I don't remember cyber cafes. I remember them overseas, which is the interesting thing. Ooh, Christiane used to work at a cyber cafe. 
uh, Ilizam from uh, Wilaya Sarawak. Good to have you here. And again, we can bend this around all we want. So we'll come in here. Right, we could see these bend, bend, right? Bend, bend, you know, create these lovely warps. But you, you could tell that already, based on the color, the color, the color is the winner here, I think. The color, this color on black seems to work out pretty well. And again, just using direct selection, we have uh, some fun artwork that we can work with. You know, chances are you want to use that. You maybe want to have a circle up here, right? Maybe it's casting a shadow, right? We'll come down here, we'll give it a fill of not that. Welcome everybody. Oh. Opacity zero. Ah, oh, I hate it when I do that. Dang it. Okay, so this happens a lot. <laughs> Sometimes you'll have the stroke or the fill um, selected. In this case, I want to make sure. There we go. So I'm just creating a shadow, basically. Right? Put that down there. And maybe this is casting somewhat of a shadow uh, is the idea. Okay? Like that. Okay. Also, this needs to be a radial gradient. And let's fix that. Two. There we go. Right. Uh, this also needs to be distorted. Gosh, is this actually gonna... Let's take a look at this. X. New layer. Paste. Uh, let's go ahead and distort this a little bit. Let's... I'm not sure what's going to happen here. Let's do um, make with mesh. One, one, maybe two, two rows, two columns. Okay. And uh, Kind of bending that shape. And hopefully the gradient a little bit. All right. Let's let's move on. Mm, that's okay. I'm not crazy about the sphere. Let's let's do some more fun stuff. Ooh, 36 days of type. Also great. Good good call. I hope somebody's doing some 36 uh, days of type action. Um, but let's do something more realistic than, or just something more interesting than this sphere. Okay, so I'm going to do a couple things. Oh, I want to do so many things right now. Uh, let's do another circle. Are you ready for this? Bam, there it is. Let's flip it. Let's chop off and make this a half circle, right? In fact, I'll do it this side. Boom. And it will be clear in a second why I did that. Let's make it all pink. Right, so for this shape, we'll go to Effect, we'll go to 3D, and we'll go to Extrude and Bevel. There we are. Okay, Extrude and Bevel, typically, sorry, I've been messing with this. Um, oh, wait, cancel. I didn't want to go to Extrude and Bevel, I apologize. 3D Revolve, because I want to take this line, and I want to, like, lathe this line 360 degrees. Bam, it's already done. There we have it. Rotating it is not really going to do that much just yet, uh, but you can see right down here, obviously we can control the lighting, and now we have maybe something that will work uh, a little bit better. So, you know, you can go either way, sort of create it yourself with a radial, do something like this. Um, uh, click OK, there we are. Uh, 36. Um, 
There we go. This is very retro. Yeah, 36 days of type. Um, just typing up some phrases that may or may not, I may or may not use. Okay, anyways. Right, if we want to take anything, this is what I originally was going to do. Let's type in 36. And I typically will make something a color, okay? And then I will go ahead and extrude it. So this was the bevel. We'll take this 36. We'll go to 3D and we'll do an extrude and bevel this time. So yeah, we're going to extrude the heck out of this. Let's go to 400. Boom, right? Let's make this isometric, right? Oh, I love it. I like this on the top. Same thing, control the lighting. You get the idea. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm sorry I'm not reading comments right now. I'm trying to pick a color. All right, you get the idea. Uh, welcome in everyone. Uh, fantastic. Uh, it began with 50 members and now we're, uh, we're an amazing big community. I don't know if you're talking about the Behance community, but hopefully you are. You know what? Now we have some different concepts going on. Okay, so this, take that content over here. This could be somewhat of our futuristic look with different shapes. Great thing is these 3D shapes, as we take them, we can modify them. Watch what happens. Let's see if I rotate it. See, it's still that single line, right? So as I rotate it, you could see that obviously like change from one thing to something entirely different. All right, let's do, let's do something else. So retro. It is getting very retro. I'm sorry. I'm, uh, I've been on this kick. I was listening to M83. Uh, oh, another. Uh, maybe this is what I'm, I'm very 80s inspired right now. Uh, best logo out of or I've been listening to Gunship. Can we just point this out? Because I think this is great music and great design. Uh, Gunship. Uh, I think it's just like, oh, shoot. Is it Gunship? Yeah, it's Gunship. Music. Music. I want to show you this because I think this is fantastic. First off, let's look at this font, which is amazing. And I don't know what it is, but I need to capture it. 
Secondly, look at this logo. Can you not tell me that's amazing? Right? So amazing, gunship. I'm just like, I think about this a lot. <laughs> I'm like, this is so amazing. So cool, right? And we could do a lot of this, right? So for this text, this is what I would do, if you don't mind me uh, jumping into... Why is it not? There we go. Let's figure out what font this is, right? Because when you use this in Illustrator, we'll jump into Photoshop. We will select this text. We will go to uh, Type and Match Font. Let's just see what we get. And again, I'm in Photoshop. And thank you so much for joining me. Yes, this is mostly design-based. Hey, it's all design-based. I just spend more of my time in Illustrator. We could see it's um, kind of looking like it's this avalanche regular or flood standard regular. So let's try both of those, avalanche regular. Picking a avalanche. Oh, come on, baby. Clear all. This happens. Oh, come on. Let's jump out to Adobe Fonts. Oh, yeah, of course I need to sign in. Anyway, open to font suggestions. I'm looking for something 80s and awesome. In fact, how do I, how could I do that? I can actually go down to uh, right down here. So we have Adobe fonts and then all these various tags. So uh, marker is kind of around what I'm looking for, but also futuristic would be cool to uh, check out as well. So anyways, oh, Bruce Valanche font. Do you mind if I search for that? Bruce uh, Valanche font. Oh, that's Bruce, Bruce Valanche. Now I know who Bruce Valanche is. All right, so that was fun. Avalanche, what was the other one that I selected? Oh, there we go. Okay, so I apologize. It took a second. I don't know why it didn't pop up a second ago. Here I am, you know, expecting everything to be immediate. It actually did sync. We own the sky. There we are. Boom. Let's take that. Oh, I'm getting a little bit too lost in the 80s, but there we have that. Let's throw uh, an outer glow onto it, and uh, yeah, why not? Let's just do, has a, dip that a little bit more into the red. There we go. Okay, it's not even what I want to talk about. So again, we're doing, again, just abstract graphics. Uh, a couple different ways I want to go with this now. Let me just take a look at my... Symbols panel, looks like I have nothing in here. Okay, let's make it, let's do this. Let's go, people, let's go. Take this, maybe we'll make it white. I'll move this over, make that one black. Take these both, uh, duplicating it. Just going to make a quick pattern. Uh, bring that down to right about there. There we go. Checkered pattern. Another way to do this is to use what the uh, repeat grid. There we go. But we have our lovely Checkers going on now. Taking all these, dropping them as a symbol. Checkers. Okay, so we're going to do something kind of fun and abstract in here. Uh, instead of making these retro spheres, I got a little bit off track. 
But uh, let's go ahead and take our same circle, right? Remember how I rotated it? We'll rotate it like that. It really just needs, I really want just like half of a circle actually. So check this out, let's do this. We could still edit this path. I could delete that and make this fun bold. Make this really large, okay? And then hit edit, edit your 3D revolve. So we're gonna edit this 3D revolve, adjust it, right? So we're looking on the inside of it, but this is what I wanna do is I wanna map art to it. So map art, not there, but on the inside. So when I map art and I select these planes, there's three planes. There's the edge, there's the inside, and then there's the outside. You'll know the difference because they will highlight, but it's very subtle. Hold on. Oh, there we go. So it's one of three. It's this one right here. Inside, edge, outside. What do we want? We want the inside. So we'll go ahead and go to our symbol. There's our checkers. Select our checkers. And sure enough, sort of creates this warp. We can do a scale to fit. And now we have this lovely sort of uh, warping look. Of course, keep in mind, it still has that. Uh, let's make that just white. But anyways. Cool. Let's adjust this. Let's throw a little perspective in here. See how we can kind of warp inside of it even more, right? Have fun with it, huh? <sighs> Biola's in her office for the first time in a year. Oh, I bet it's surreal. Oh, I wonder what that's like. So again, super kind of cool, right? So now we have a place for this to live. I don't know. Ah, uh, it's not working. All right, how to make the bowl effect. All I did is I took a line, let's do this real fast. Hit N for pencil, right? Draw, take that line. What do we do? We lathe it. So 3D, um, revolve. And there you go. You might have to do the left edge or the right edge, but as you can see there, I've made a quick little bowl, right? And then I just filled it with that texture. Uh, how do you make the symbols? Okay. Window. Symbols. Open up your symbols panel. Make whatever you want. And then you just drag it in there. It's pretty easy. Bam! There it is. Symbol. Done. Okay? That's where your symbols live. Okay, symbols can be used for a number of things, right? This is your... You have your symbol and then you have your different instances of your symbol. Uh, you will need symbols if you're going to use the symbol sprayer tool. If you need um, the start and the end of a, uh, a pattern brush, that's what this tail is. And I don't know where the, uh, huh, I don't know where the snake's head is, but nonetheless, that's what is there. Okay, I feel like I have a lot of things more to talk about and I'm, and I'm drawing a blank. Right, but let's take a look at where we were and where we've gone. Our abstract shapes, yes, yes. Um, we do a couple other things. Let's do, uh, yeah, Noor, I remember when they were from the Adobe Studios and you heard some weird sounds coming from the wall. I don't know what that's all about. I uh, wanted to point out a couple more things because um, you could play with additional shapes that a lot of people like don't know that are here. So we can go in here, we can use a rectangle grid, polar grid, spiral tool, the arc tool. Um, if we want to give anything a highlight, say for instance, um, if this was shiny and I get it, that's not quite working. But just like we saw with gunship out here, 
you know, these highlights, we could also do that in Illustrator, right up here, Flare Tool. Go in there, click, and then drag, right? We're adding a little flare uh, right there, right, to that edge. So again, I feel like that seems very, like, 80s. All right, there it is. If you want to customize it, just, like I said, give it a second, but double click on it. Now you can control the number of rings and rays and direction, all right? So uh, opacity in the center looks pretty good. Rays, let's take that down to five. Watch it change. There we go. And the largest, 100%. Wait for it. There you go. Lens flares. Cool. Not crazy about the color of this. I would need to shift the colors. I would go into edit colors, recolor artwork, right? It's taking, it's like has all these various browns. Well, let's go to advanced options and click edit. Uh, so let's like, lock everything together and let's just shift this this way and by shifting it there we go we have that lovely pink so again recolor artwork to sort of retint anything that might even be complex otherwise all right we own the sky people <laughs> All right. Take a look at a couple other things that I typically kind of take a look at. Let's go into the rectangular grid tool. Okay. So this could also be useful. We're going to drag out this rectangular grid, right? Uh, yeah, right now you can't say anything because there's nothing here. But this is the cool thing. Like dragging this out, yours isn't going to look like mine. Hit the up and down arrows. So I'm hitting the down arrows. I'm making less rows. Uh, to the right will give you more columns, left will give you less columns. So we can jump in and create a cool grid with as many squares as we want, right? We could hold down the shift key and make sure they're perfect squares if we want to. But let's go ahead and create that. There it is, right? We can see the color of them, right? It's pretty subtle because these lines are so thin. Let's crank it up. There we go, we have our lovely grid. Right, for this grid, I wanna actually sort of put this in perspective. That brings us to this last effect, 3D, and we'll do a rotate, okay? 3D rotate, right? 3D rotates, does an offset initially. What I wanna do is I wanna come in here and I wanna drag this up like that. All right, dragging this up. This is really hard to see because my highlight color and my color of my line are the exact same. That's kind of what I'm having a problem with. So I'll click OK. Let's just go out here. Let's change this to green and then go back into 3D rotate. There we go. So green is the selection. We can see what it's doing. It's tilting that down. We're not noticing anything, by the way. Let's crank that up. It's not going in perspective like I want. Right over here, perspective. Let's up that to like 60%. There we go, holy moly. Maybe that's too high. But look what I'm doing. I'm actually just kind of a tilting that down. We'll go 40 degrees, maybe 45. There we go, 45 degrees. We'll, make, we'll zero out some of these numbers and it's really this top rotation that we're rotating on. Um, and yeah, that looks, I guess, pretty good. Click OK. There we have our lovely, like, Tron grid. Yeah, you could take the flare into your libraries. I'm pretty sure this flare, by the way, has to, um, might have, I don't know if it has any blend modes with it. Um, or if it's just transparency, but yes, you can. Right, so here we have our fantastic grid. You knew it was coming if you're gonna do something like 80s style. Where's our sphere? 
Let's grab our spheres right down there. Let's make this smaller, by the way. Everything here is so large. Actually, you know what? We'll be cool. Take this. Wait for it. Bring it down here. Cool thing is, this is editable. Make that blue if we want to. Mm, this might be better as pink. Ah, let's go with blue. And again, select this. Effect. How's everyone doing? Is everybody enjoying this or, or is it just me? <laughs> Space Kins in the house. Am I the only one enjoying this? Heck yeah, this is fun. It got way more retro than I was expecting, but again, this is in combination with my uh, Photoshop Masterclass because I just like never have enough time. Like I need at least two hours to create something reasonable. Uh, we'll crank this up to 40, right? We start to see that glow, okay? And uh, hopefully you can see that glowing a little bit. I could always beef that up by doing what I was doing earlier. Ellipse. Send that to the back. Anyways, it's giving it a little bit of a burst. Um, you could always outline this, of course, right? Um, and sometimes you might want to. In this case, uh, I could expand appearance. So that will keep the grid. And then I'm able to rotate it. But basically, it's a bunch of lines that I can now work with. Same thing for this. Expand appearance. Uh, yeah, what else? How how uh, how we doing? How we doing, folks? We own the sky. What? What is happening? There's a grid down there. There's this little floating sphere. I don't know what that's all about. That's okay. It's just like it's supposed to be like abstract fun that we can work with. Let's take this. Let's scrunch it up some more. Scrunch this up some more. Shrink it, do something like that. I don't know. All right. Cool. Let's go back to our references. We've already made a lot of this stuff. This stuff is way cool. It's a lot, very 80s. Let's take a step back. Kind of based on what we learned, we could do some of this other stuff. If I ever want to make a sphere like this, by the way, say, okay, that would be cool to do, again, just kind of like some retro lines. You still have that capability right in here for these 3D objects. So selecting it, go to 3D Revolve, and rather than using this lighting, say, hey, you know what? I just want the lines from it change this to wireframe. You can't see it right now because it's on black and I apologize. We'll click OK. We'll zoom out. And change this to white. Ooh, that looks even better. But here we go. Now we have these lines that I can use. So if you want some weird 3D sphere uh, and you just want the lines, you could see right in here. And then you can control. You can say, hey, you know, make it isometric, right? So it's um, obviously, um, you know, sort of top and bottom just looks a little better, right? So you get the idea. From there, we can click OK. 
We can, um, oh, there's so many fun things we can do and I forgot about half of them. I have another idea for creating something cool. So we'll take this, we will expand appearance, we'll ungroup it, uh, but right in here, I'll select all of this. Should be all the lines. Let's just go ahead and click there. There we go. So there's a lot going on here, just so you know. Let's just take this, let's cut it, let's put it on a new layer. Let's just, this is just gonna allow us to pick it apart a little bit easier, right? Because I will often reference my layers panel and say, hey, you know what? Since, you know, Illustrator made this, I can see how, how deeply it's grouped, etc. Right, we can see all these crazy paths. What I think would be cool to do is add a little glow in there. So let's turn that off. There we have this, this is cool. Let's grab a glow. Come on, hurry up, Paul. How many times am I gonna do the same thing? That's why I usually have swatches and I need more of them. I need some, I need some strong swatches that, uh, you know. There we go, like here's this glow for what it's worth. We want to put this glow inside of this sphere and work it, work it, Paul, work it. Drop it right there, right? Okay, where the heck is that? Let's take this, let's ungroup it. Let's take this outside. Happens to be this first one. I'll just kind of put it right in there. There we go. So now it's technically, is it? Let's turn this off. It's technically um, inside of the sphere is what I was trying to create, okay? You got it. All right, uh, 53, go Paul, go, hurry, hurry, hurry. I love doing this, effect. Think, Paul, think. Uh, I need color halftone, pixelate color halftone. Uh, 30. Click OK. All right. Undo that. Let's go zero, 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 zero. OK, there we go. Is that too small? Yes, it is too small. Anyways, I was just doing a fun pattern. So let's bring this back. Let's do a redo. Uh, click on color halftone, which is what I said it uh, should have done. Uh, let's do 30. There we go. We have these lovely dots. And I would use these dots and I'd wrap them around a sphere or put them inside of something, right? So that's all. I'm down to my last couple minutes. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I, I was, uh, I've given you guys lots of ideas and uh, I think that's kind of fun, right? Just so many things that you can experiment with all within good old Illustrator to create our fun abstract art. So thank you so much for joining me. You guys are wonderful. Boom, baby. Map art to the outside. Where the heck is the outside? I don't know. There's only two options. Bam. Scale to fit. Bam, there we are. Anyways, that's all I wanted to do is start to really warp that. And now you have an AT&T logo. <laughs> all right, thanks everybody. Appreciate you. Um, have fun in Illustrator. Think of different ways of combining these elements. It could be something simple. It could be something complex, right? Uh, get inspired, of course, on Behance because it has all the fun stuff. I didn't even get into patterns and things we could have done as well. So but that's all pretty straightforward. I appreciate you guys. I see you there, Susan and Space Kitten and Tim and Alyssa and Andreas and Little Cyclist out there. You can, of course, rewatch this uh, later on. But we got a full day uh, planned for you. Oh, we have the one and only Terry White coming up next. How would I edit your photos? I love this real world use case for just like, hey, how would you, how would Terry White do this? I love that. Uh, so anyways, it's going to be a lot of fun. Thanks for hanging out. And I will be back 
later on with the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. And then we're gonna start combining all these elements, making something really cool in Photoshop that I'm so excited about. So more on that later. Thanks so much for watching, appreciate you guys. Stay tuned, the one and only Terry White coming up next. Thanks everybody.